Welcome back, and I hope you learned something new out of chapter one. Again, the purpose of these lessons out of your book is just to familiarize yourself with the Excel spreadsheet program. So in this chapter, we're going to be working out of chapter two. We'll learn how to work with data and Excel tables. And once again, if you are an experienced Excel user, these first few lessons might be kind of boring, but I promise you that soon we'll get to some more challenging work and we'll explore all the different things that Excel has to offer. But I need to assume that you are an inexperienced Excel user and so the book will walk us step by step through some important features of the program. In this chapter, we will learn how to enter and revise data we'll use to manage data and also learn a cool new feature called the flash fill. We'll learn how to move data, how to find and replace data, how to correct and expand upon data, and how to define Excel tables. Again, as you work through each, les each lesson, I would strongly encourage you to keep a notebook to jot down important things you learn, for example, shortcuts or things you may not be familiar with as you learn about Excel. For example, did you know that an Excel workbook contains over a million rows of data? That's mind-boggling to me. And sometimes control keys are quicker than using the mouse. So on the screen, you'll see some important uh, control keys that I at first didn't pay much attention to, but the more I work on a computer, I don't like having to take my hands off to use the mouse. So a lot of times the con control keys are very uh, quick. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through this quick study task that you'll be uploading for five points. And um, if you have any questions, of course, feel free to post to the discussion board to ask your classmates, or of course, I'm available by email. But let's get started. So to speed things up, I've entered some of the column headings that the quick study task in Canvas will outline for you. So just to save some time, as you read through the study task, you'll notice that I asked you to create several columns. So I've already put them in here. They're fairly self-explanatory. Um, I believe I asked you to call this sheet or this workbook family and friends. So I'll go ahead and type that in. Hopefully I can spell correctly. There we go. And I've put last name, first name, full name, which is where the flash fill feature is going to come in. I put some birth dates in there, some days old, and some years old. So I'll start off what, by putting in some information about my family. I'll start with myself. So my last name is Johnson, and my first name is Debbie. And then I'm going to put my husband and his name. And then let me put a couple of my kids in here just to get us started and show you how this flash fill feature works. I'll go ahead and put my daughter who teaches economics at the college. And I'll put my son. And I believe I asked you to enter a total of 10. So in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that. But this flash fill feature is pretty cool. This is what I'm going to demonstrate in the quick study task. So one of the new features of Excel 2016 is this flash fill feature. And let's say I wanted to put the full name together. And Excel will help um, look at patterns and remember them and then figure out what it is you're trying to do and will offer um, a suggestion on the remaining cells. So, for example, if I type in my name on the first cell and then press the Enter key, probably as soon as I start typing in my husband's name, do you see what happened? The flash fill feature already figured it out, what I was doing, and gives suggestions for the remainder. 
And if that's acceptable to you, you can just press enter to enter them in. And that's a pretty cool feature. You can imagine if you had a list of 100 people, how much time that would save you. So I'll go ahead and press the enter key to accept that. And let me widen this a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Okay, next in this lesson, you'll learn that Excel also has a variety of computations built in. So let me start off by putting some information in here and show you some of the math features that's also built in. You would have read about these things in the lesson. So let me put my birthday in. It's July 5th of 1964. And as the quick task um, information in Canvas will tell you, we can find out how old we are by putting in a function. So here's the function for that. We're going to put in equals now, which is, would mean today. And I'll go ahead and put that feature in like that. Minus the cell that my birth date's in here. And let me um, format this as a number. Otherwise, it's not going to give me an answer. So any kind of a number format will work. And it'll tell you that I am over 19,000 days old. Boy, is that a downer for me today. So if I wanted to turn that into how many years old I am, I could take that number, which is the number of days, and divide by 365, since there's 365 days in a year. And Excel will then tell you that I'm 53.12 years old, which is correct. So again, we didn't have to sit there and figure out how old somebody was. We could simply enter mathematical formulas to do the trick. And so the nice thing is once you enter other people's birthdays, let me do my daughters down here, um, 3, 5, 19, 89. Once I do that, I can take those same formulas and copy them down. And I won't have to sit there and manually figure it out. So if I ever forget how old my children are, I could come to this little spreadsheet and it would be updating every time I opened it. So I'm also going to have you do some other things as you read about it. I believe I asked you to make the column heights a certain amount, and there's some other minor things you'll have to do. But that's a demonstration of what I would expect this um, quick study to look like. So of course you'll always want to save it using the file name, and if you go to Canvas, you'll see in this quick study lesson that I asked you to save it as assignment chapter 2, and then you would put your last name, not my last name, your last name. And of course you would save it to whatever file you wanted to save it in. So don't forget to look it over for neatness. Make sure it prints out on one page. Even though you won't be sending me the printout, I will be testing your file when you upload it. And of course if you have any questions, make sure you reach out and ask for help. So once again, after you've completed that little exercise, um, and after you've practiced doing some of the practice files listed in your book, go ahead and upload that file to me. Don't forget that you need to post to the discussion board as required. And then also don't forget you have a small assessment quiz. And remember you have a timer running and you can only get into that once. And just a reminder, if you need help, just reach out. I can't help you if you don't ask. Remember, I am always available for help. I love what I do, and one of the reasons I love it is because I get to talk to and, and help as many students as needed. Come into my office hours or email me with your suggestion, or consider posting a discussion question to the board um, to get your classmates help come into any of the numerous labs that are offered, or of course, your 
available or welcome to drop in on my traditional class. Thanks, I look forward to working with you. Have a great day.